Hello, welcome to another episode of Al's Garage. Today is an exciting day because I have a new air compressor. This is the Ingersoll Rand 60, uh, 60 gallon, uh, 5 horsepower compressor. Uh, uh, this is going to be kind of a review and how to install this item in your garage. Why did I choose the 60 gallon compressor with a 5 horsepower engine? Well, the 60 is kind of your minimum comfortable amount when it comes to painting. Uh, I'm going to be doing some auto painting going forward and I wanted to have uh, that backup air capacity for those types of jobs. This will also do some sandblasting. If you're really cranking away and you have a heavy duty industrial thing, you'd be better off with an 80. Uh, again, I was considering an 80, but again, 60, it's a little bit smaller. I can still do what I want. And the, uh, the, uh, the uh, size here fits a little bit better in this two car garage uh, with this little extra space where I will be doing my work. So uh, Ingersoll Rand, uh, I've done some shopping, read some reviews. It's a good brand, been a long, around a long time. A lot of people are happy with this purchase. Uh, my wife thought we would want to go with DeWalt because the tank was yellow and not brown. Um, DeWalt is a good brand too, but uh, regardless of the color of the tank, I decided to opt with this one here. So uh, let's get to installing our compressor. When the compressor was delivered, it came on a small pallet. First step is to just remove those bolts holding the compressor onto the pallet and then get the compressor off the pallet. And how I did this, and I do not recommend this because it is certainly a heavy heavy item. Uh, I recommend having at least two people to help walk that off of the pallet. I miraculously was able to make this work, but uh, I don't recommend doing this unless you're really strong or um, you know, know you've done this before. Just be very, very careful on this piece of it. And once I have the pallet removed, then I will be walking the compressor to the place that I will be installing it. From that point, I use a Sharpie to mark where I want to install my concrete anchors. And then it's time to get those concrete anchors installed. Now, there's a few different items I used. One was a compressor insulation kit, these rubber pads. I'll link those in the description as well as the concrete anchors that I used which were half inch by four and a quarter inches and that worked for my application so certainly you know look at your own application to determine what's best for you. Now the Ryobi drill that I use has a hammer drill setting which I set to for this job it certainly makes it easier and then I proceeded to take the time to drill through the concrete for each of those holes. It took a little while. I was trying to not get my revs up so high that it would get the drill bit too hot and glaze it over, dull it out. So it took me a while to get this done and eventually we got there. From there I drilled a hole through the center of my compressor mounting pads. Then I stuck my concrete anchors through those compressor mounting pads and staged them for where they needed to go on all three holes. My next step was to take a, what I call sacrificial nut and put it on the concrete anchor about 75, 80% of the way on um, so that it isn't having any of the concrete anchor threads sticking out. And then I used that to drive the concrete anchor into the actual concrete. Now, in the concrete anchor instructions, they tell you to get the nut on first before pounding it down, as you can see here. But I wanted to do it in this way just to make sure I could get the anchors on and then put my compressor on. So I don't know, you know, kind of which way is the right way or not, but that's the way I tried to do it here, uh, and it ended up going mostly successful. Once I removed the compressor and mounting pads after I hammered that down, I ended up putting some 
JB Weld in that hole so that I could allow it to seal. It's not like it wasn't going to pull out, but I felt like that would help hold it in and lock it in just a little bit better uh, to ensure that uh, this compressor was not going to go anywhere. And from there I was able to install the compressor mounting pads in their final location, then install the compressor by walking it on top of everything, uh, and then tightening down each of my bolts within those concrete anchors. This was a little bit of a job because I hadn't had much experience working with concrete anchors, but I think it'll be valuable because this will allow the compressor to be in one place. You know, there won't be any risk of it falling over and I will have those concrete anchors which will dampen the vibrations and make sure it will extend the life of my compressor as long as possible. Now when you get the compressor, it doesn't quite come with everything that you need to just get it going. So now that it's mounted, there are still a few things I had to do to get this thing working. First was purchasing a half inch MIP to quarter inch FIP brass fitting, which will allow me to install my air tools. Whenever I do fittings like this, I always throw a little Teflon tape on there to make sure that it seals it up nice and tight. In the air tools section of my local hardware store, there is a air tool receptacle with a male fitting on it, and I purchased that and installed that to complete this section of the compressor uh, because I knew that I wanted to plug in a air line uh, directly into this, so that ended up working. If you have something else that you have in mind, uh, whether it be some sort of a hard line, you know, you certainly have the freedom to do that, but this is how I wanted to do my compressor. An extremely important step to ensure the compressor is working properly is to fill the compressor with oil. I use the Ingersoll Rand provided compressor oil, which is extended life all season select lubricant, and it's really easy to install. What you do is you just take the cap off. I just used a flathead screwdriver to get it going. It's a plastic piece, so it comes right out pretty easy. And then you take your compressor oil and just fill it up. It takes quarter to a third of the con container that's provided, but just kind of watch that sight glass. And when that sight glass is full, then you have reached your appropriate capacity of the compressor oil. Nice and simple. At this point, it's time to hook up the electrical for our compressor. What I did is purchased from my local hardware store a 30 to 50 amp dual power plug and I made sure that the plug style matched up with the 220 outlet that is in my wall. Now, my strategy on this is to take this plug and made it to a flexible power cord, uh, which I'll then hook into my compressor. And what I wanna do is have it to where this compressor literally plugs into the wall so that I can unplug it when I need to utilize other tools that are 220, like my welder or anything else that I might get in the future, for instance. The process is pretty simple. There's two power lines and a ground line, and it's just a matter of splicing these and properly installing them within the outlet. Given that this is electrical work, if you're not comfortable doing this or don't have much experience, you know, don't watch me and say, okay, now I can do it. Just please call a professional or an electrician friend if you have any reservations about this, uh, just to make sure that you do it right. Next is to hook up the electrical to the other half of my power cord. That involved taking the cover off the electrical area of the compressor and then installing the clamp to ensure that my cord wasn't going to short out or anything like that. From there, I took my two power cables, which I already have appropriate fastener, sliced to the end of those. Uh, I hooked those up as well as I hooked my ground up. Again, <laughs> you can tell by the way I talk, I'm not an electrical professional, but I was able to read the instructions on how they wanted it done and make a few phone calls and, and ensure that I did this correctly. So. Uh, it was pretty straightforward and from there I installed my cover and that wraps it up for the electrical part of this.
With the compressor now working, I had to test it out, so we threw some air in the tires of our jogging stroller, and it did the job. And that's a wrap on the installation of my 60 gallon, 5 horsepower Ingersoll Rand air compressor. I'm hoping that this compressor will serve me good for years to come. Alright, we're back and this is a 6 month update. Uh, since I bought this thing, it's been about 6 to 8 months and I have loved it. It's been great, I have used it for removing paint with a needle scaler. I have used it to actually paint vehicles. I built a nice uh, filter unit that has a uh, dryer filter system so that I can have nice clean air coming out of my paint gun and it's been able to handle everything I've thrown at it so far. Uh, I will in the future probably get into sandblasting but as somebody who is like a do-it-yourselfer, weekend warrior, car, restoration, fixer-upper guy, uh, this compressor has been fine for me. So I would recommend it, um, but that's really all I have to say. I hope this was helpful for you. If you're looking at one of these, like I said, I recommend it. So uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.